Hello, my crafty family. Hope everybody's enjoying their 4th of July. Um, I got some work done today, and my dog, for the first time ever, freaked out over fireworks. He's never freaked out over fireworks. He doesn't freak out over thunderstorms ever. But for some reason, he was freaking out over the neighbors, you know, lighting off fireworks and stuff. So I basically had to sit with him on my lap the entire time. And the only thing that saved my ass from having to sit there all night long was a thunderstorm came through and put a stop to the fireworks, which he don't care about thunderstorms. Still don't care about thunderstorms. I don't know why the fireworks all of a sudden this year. He's like eight years old. Now all of a sudden he's afraid of fireworks. So bizarre. But anyway, on to what I want to show you. So I, I've i been, there's some things that I've done over the years that I forget that I do. And then I see a video and I'm like, oh yeah, I used to do those type of things. And I see somebody do a video on it and I'm like, all of, all of a sudden I'm inspired to do it all over again. So I was watching, I think her name is Amy Pierce and she does some amazing stuff. So if you've not seen her videos, she does some really cool stuff. Um, but anyway, I was just watching her videos and she does stuff with hot glue. And I was like, oh yeah, I haven't done stuff with hot glue in a long time. But I used to, and I, don't, I can't find the one that I had made like six years ago. I made one and for some reason I can't find it. And I have a feeling the reason why I can't find it is um, I took all the, like I make, uh, I'm going to show you how to make a stamp, like a rubber stamp basically with hot glue. And on each side, you put a different design and then you have like, you know, several different stamps in one. Well, I had made one and I think what I did was I needed a block. And so I ended up taking, you know, you could peel rubber the or rubber hot glue off. If you sit and do it hard enough, you could peel off all the hot glue. And I think I did that. I think I sat and peeled it all off because I needed a block so bad for a project I was doing. <laughs> So I think I, and I think it gotten, it had gotten pretty worn out because, you know, it does. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a rubber stamp. Well, it's not a rubber stamp, it's a hot glue stamp. And we're going to use a block of wood to make our stamp. So we're just going to make some, and now these are meant to be, they're not meant to be perfect. Let me move my chair because it's very uncomfortable the way I'm sitting right now. Ugh, there we go. It's not meant to be perfect. It's meant for like mixed media use and to have like funky designs and it's meant to be like an imperfect stamp. So I'm going to do a couple of patterns on it. And the first one I'm going to do is like a zigzaggy pattern and I'm going to start up in like the corner and I'm just going to take my hot glue and I'm just going to make this pattern and then I'm going to just repeat it. And see, some of the times I screw up, and like I did here, and I make the glue too thick. I don't know. So what I'll do is, while it's still hot, I'll flatten it down a little bit on my hot um, nonstick mat. So that this way, it's all the same. Like, this one's very stuck down now. So I'd have to do that to all of them, which you can do, because it's still raised enough to catch some ink. Um, you see what I mean? Like, I flattened it out so that it's all the same. Now you don't have to do that on all of them and I don't plan on it. I'm just doing it on this one to show you. So I'll do like one or two of the lines and then I'll, and it comes out like a squiggly line and I let it dry just a little bit. And then before it dries all the way, I will lay it down on my mat and until it dries, then I'll pull it up. Cause that flattens it out. <clears throat> See what I mean? And it also gave it like the texture of my mat. Like my nonstick mat has like a texture to it. I don't know if you could see that. And it picked up some of the paint that was on my mat. So don't mind that. Don't mind the paint. It's no big deal. So that's how I'm going to do that one. There's a little edge here that I'm going to cut off that the glue went over a little bit. So that's how I did that one. So you can do that where you like kind of flatten it out on your nonstick surface. Um, I just got to remember not to do it in the paint next time. And so it'll make a very slightly raised kind of stamp, but it'll still work fine. At least it should because the other ones did. Or you can just make a blobby kind of stamps um, and not obviously do that to them. Um, so for this one, I'll make like a few circles. And what I'll do is I'll like connect them. And like, these are just like sloppy circles. 
kind of, and I'll let it dry. It almost looks like Mickey Mouse ears, actually. <laughs> it's like Mickey, it's like a wonky Mickey Mouse, kind of. Well, I might add something else so it doesn't look like Mickey Mouse, because I don't want it to look like Mickey Mouse. There we go. Now it looks more like random geometric shapes. Not even geometric, just weird shapes. That's what we're going for. So that's that one. Then I'm going to do just some stripes. And I wish I had um, some hot glue to go with the hot glue gun. Um, to go with my, um, yeah, my high temperature glue gun because I'd rather use that one. I get better results. But I stupidly... Um, yeah, I'm trying to do this and talk at the same time. Not happening very well. I gotta add a glue stick. I, uh, stupidly have the wrong glue sticks for my high, my high temp gun. And if you use, even though these glue sticks in the package said that they were multi-temperature, meaning you can use them in a hot, uh, high temp or low temp, they're really only good for low temp because when you try to use them in a high temp gun, the gun just continuously drips glue even when you're not touching the trigger because it's just that glue stick is just not meant for um, it's just not meant for a low temp gun. So here I'm just making like some random weird blobs and I'll go back in and get the glue strings you know those little glue string things I'll get them out of the way. Right now I'm not going to worry about it. So that's that design. This one here is dry. Go on to this side. I'll make a wonky looking heart. And then I'll see like I can't stand when I'm running out of glue stick because that's more annoying than anything. I need to get a glue gun that has the really long, the big, long sticks of glue. That's what I need. But actually, I'm going to try to flatten that one out a little bit. Because it came out a little too bumpy. If it comes out like where one area is too much, too raised, more raised than the other area, then your stamp's not going to come out flat. Like when you go to stamp it, it's not going to come out right. So sometimes, yeah, I just ruined that one. Woohoo! That's all right. We're gonna salvage it somehow. It'll probably still look cool. I didn't. I didn't let leave it sit down there long enough for it to see. I screw up, but that's okay because that's the fun. Because sometimes you get like some cool patterns when you like totally screw up, so it's okay. Play around with it because if you don't like it, you can just peel it off. It's glue stick. You can literally peel this off, which is the kind of the cool thing about it. Um, let's see, what else can I do? Um, I probably should have thought about this <laughs> ahead of time. Uh, I'll just do a large kind of wonky half, half butt circle thing. I like to just do random patterns. So I did something like that. Because these are meant to just like use as blot, like stain kind of, you know, like. You know, like if you're going to stain a page or something with like a coffee ring type of thing. Kind of like that where you're just kind of making messy patterns. You're not going to get any precision out of, out of a glue gun. I'm just telling you. I mean, it's very difficult to get any kind of real precision out of a glue gun. So you got to think of it as it's going to be like an artsy fartsy kind of look. Um, let's see. What do I got? One more. Two more. One more side. That's it. So the one last side I'll do. Um, I'll try to do a flower. Yeah, hold on. It's 
It's a wonky flower, but it's a flower nonetheless. So on the sides that are dry, I can go back and pull out any little glue strings that are in there that are now stuck to my fingers. Love that. And you're just gonna like lightly rub over it and you can pretty much get the, I just stuck my fingers in the flower before it was dry. It's gonna add character. Leave it to me to screw it up. Usually I would wait till each side was completely dry before I did this, but for the sake of the video, I am rushing a little bit because I know you don't want to sit here and watch me pick glue strings out of my little homemade stamps. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry another minute. I'm going to put this glue mess in the garbage. Okay, and then while that dries completely, I'm going to show you how to make a huge background stamp. And this one's cool because the wood, if you wanted to peel them off, they, they come off, it just takes a little bit more effort. Whereas this one, once you put the glue on, um, it's so much easier to peel it off because it's smooth surface. So like, this would be cool to do like, like dots or like a checker pattern or like a bigger background kind of stamp. So I'm going to do like, I think I'm going to do like polka dots. And they're going to be like non-perfect polka dots, obviously. And this will be my, like a background type of stamp. Ugh, I run out of glue stick so fast. And then it's, I don't know, I need a new glue gun. I need one of those dual temperature glue guns, like the kind that actually work. The kind that work well. And if you don't like your pattern, once it's dry, all you gotta do is peel it off. And I'll even show you how to do that at the end. It's very simple. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that to dry. And then we're gonna go back to the block and I'm going to get a piece of paper and because of the fact that it is a glue you know glue stick basically it's glue you want to stamp on a foam pad this way you have a better chance of getting more coverage so even if that means you know like putting your sheet of paper on here and taking your, I'm going to just use like a color that's pretty bright so you could see. Let's do the, let's do the Mickey Mouse ear looking thing that I did. And just stamp that on. See? How cool is that? I mean, so much fun. And then you can use a baby wipe to clean it off if you want to clean it. You know, and it cleans. It might stain the wood, but who cares? Nobody cares about the wood because that's not the part that's touching your paper. And we'll do the one with the lines that I did, like the random like lines and dots. And I'll stamp that. Whoops, it's off the, of course it's off the pad. Oops. So it didn't come out as good because it's off the pad. So I wasn't paying attention to where the pad was. I'll try that one again. Hold on. Let's do that one again, this time on the dang pad. Because you'll get better coverage if you have like a mouse pad or something underneath. See? How cool is that? Er my gird! And like I said, it's going to stain the wood as you wipe the stamp off. But it's, you know, the stamping part is perfectly fine. Okay, so here's like my rings that I made. Let's do that. And I'll do that right there. This time I have this. The foam underneath, like a smart person I am, because it gives it something. And that's this way, even if your 
glue is like wonky on this side, higher on this side than it is over here. Unlike a regular rubber stamp, which is perfectly smooth, like all the lines that are going to hit the contact with the paper are perfectly one complete, you know, level. You know, glue sticks you can't get like that. So it's best to do it on top of a mouse pad or I make these with um, like the dollar store, store foam. Um, I glued together around the edges uh, like six pieces of foam so that I had like a little cushion and it works. It works fantastic. And so let's do the flower. And they all they all have imprinted perfectly. Like seriously, they've all given a per pretty perfect impression here. Considering that, I mean, it's exactly the impression. You see what I'm saying? It's perfect. You can't beat it for the price, considering that the block was a dollar and the glue stick was probably a penny. So... For a dollar and a penny, you got yourself a stamp, and you can customize it. And if you're a better drawer than I am, then obviously you're going to be able to have a little more patience to sit and draw something out with your glue gun. And if you have a finer tip glue gun, unlike my 15-year-old thing, which I do have a finer tip glue gun, it's the um, high temp glue gun, which I don't have glue sticks for. All right, let's do the heart, which is wonky, but it's I like it wonky. Let's see how that comes out. See my wonky heart? I love it. You know, it's just, these are just cute little stamps to add some extra something something to your journal pages. You know, when you're doing it, you know, you're, um, there's that one I flattened out. Let's do that one. I forgot about that one. We'll do that one right down there. This is the one that I had flattened out. It'll be, per it'll be really nice because when you flatten it out, it comes out nice. Ooh yeah, look at that texture in that sucker. Because I flattened it out like I said on my um, non-stick mat, which already has like a texture to it. That is so cool. I'm so in love with that. The only thing with when you flatten it out onto your non-stick mat, if you're going to do that, you're likely going to get a line across from the block itself, which to me I don't care about. But you might care. That's the only part you got to be careful of. Okay, let's do, let's get another piece of paper. And now I'm not, I don't know if this is going to be, yeah, it should, it should pick up. I should be able to get it on there. Let's do the one that I put as a background stamp. This is the one with all the dots on it. I'll pick off all the little stringies that are left behind that I did not do. Just so they don't get stuck and make a problem. I want it to come out good. We'll take the same color. And this you got to go over like each kind of dot really. All right, you ready? Let's see how this comes out. Give it a little pressure. Look, how cool is that? I mean, seriously, it costed literally like nothing to make and you have got yourself some funky, cool, kind of your own art, you know. It's your own abstract art stamps. That's what you can call them, and that's what I'll call them. Abstract art stamps that you make yourself. You know, it's just fun. You can't beat that for nothing. And then if you don't like how, let's say you don't like how these ones have the, they're not solid. So you can find those easily because they have usually have the dimples in it. Just go through and look, pick them off, make, you know, then redo them. Oh, I don't like the way those came out. I like the way the other ones came out. So, okay, I'll go around and pick off, pick off the ones with the dimples and watch. I'll redo them and try to get them a little more perfect. Here, let's see if I can redo them. Dang it. Okay, I'm trying to redo these.
Now I'll let those dry for a few minutes and we'll see if it comes out more solid. So you could do that or, you know, I kind of liked it with the dimples, but for example purposes, I wanted to show you um, that you can actually correct your, you know, mistakes. Um, so that's that. Now I also wanted to show you how to give dimension to your canvas or project or whatever you're doing. Uh, while that's drying, I'll show you this and hopefully I'll remember to go back to it. But let's pretend this is our canvas. I'm going to do it on a piece of chipboard. Okay, let's pretend it's your canvas or you can do it on the chipboard, obviously. Let's pretend I have a precision tipped glue gun because that's what I wanted to show you is with the precision tip so that it came out a little better. And let's say you wanted to draw like you wanted to add some dimension to your canvas and you didn't want and you don't have texture paste because you don't have to have texture paste to add dimension to your canvas. Texture paste is expensive. I did a video on how you can make it, but what if you don't have some of the ingredients for some reason? Because you can even do it with baby powder. So most people usually do have the ingredients. But for some reason, let's say you're, you know, not confident in the way you're going to, you know, do it. I don't know. But you still want to add some dimension and texture to your canvas you can do it so many ways you could do it with tissue paper you could do it with you know ev there's so many things I'll get into that in another video but for now I'm going to show you how to get to get some dimension and some texture with a glue gun so what you would do is you can um, you can make flowers you can make clouds you can make circles you can like you know you know how they have like uh, the stencils that people will or they'll doodle and you know how they'll use like the texture paste to do a stencil that has like you know Tim Holtz has that thing where it's like it's like random circles and they're not they're obviously they're imperfect circles and it's a stencil and you could take the texture paste and use the texture paste to make the random circles okay on your canvas so you can do that with glue which sorry I, I have a trouble speaking while I'm trying to concentrate on doing something so I get like completely silent and then I forget what I was saying so there's those we'll let those dry and so also you you don't have to do like geometric type of shapes you can do um, a tree like a tree branch or something uh, so you can just do like a tree branch and you can I don't know if I have exactly enough glue for this but you can do like the lines of the tree if I had my more precision tip, it would look a lot better than this. Um, so if you do the branches coming off, you can do like, yeah, and, and it wouldn't have as many of these little glue, annoying little things. The little glue um, strings. So what I'm doing is I'm just drawing like a random kind of branch, which I suck at with this tip on here. Seriously, like it's awful because I can't, first of all, the glue in this particular glue gun does not come out very smooth. It comes out really weird. Um, so it's kind of hard to get it to cooperate because it doesn't. It just doesn't come out as nice as the high temp so it works better if you have a high temp glue gun it just does but I think you get my drift um, I've made much better ones than these trust me because uh, I've done like trees and branches and stuff like that and it's much easier to do if you have a high temp glue gun and longer glue sticks than just these wonky kind of cruddy kind of glue sticks.
Anyway, I'm not going to keep going on that. But there's the tree branch. I don't know if you can see it. We'll let that dry. And then I'll show you some painting techniques we can do on that real quick. Um, and also, like, besides some tree trunks, you can draw, obviously, more geometric shapes. Or you can draw, like... Like, uh, like scalloped edges. Like that. So you can obviously get lots of dimension. You can also build up an area. I've got glue strings all over me. So let's say you want like some just random you know, whatever you want to call it, just random blobs. And I'm not going to get much out of this right now because I can add to it afterwards. See, like I did that random blob. I can add to that when my heat, my glue gun has to heat back up again. So I'll let that happen and I'll show you what it looks like to stamp with that one stamp now that I've fixed those circles. So now that I have fixed the wonky circles, I'll use this scrap piece. And we will re-stamp, re-ink this sucker up, and see how it turns out this time, now that I have adjusted it. But it's a lot of fun to do these, and what's cool is, you know, you can make some really cute stamps for your kids to use and stuff. Much better. Now there's only one wonky one, and that's only because I couldn't stand up and put my pressure on it, because it doesn't have a dimple in it. That, oh, maybe it does, but whatever. My point is, you can fix it. I just missed one, apparently. And you can get a more random pattern. A more solid pattern is what I meant to say. But anyway, so you get my drift. You're picking up what I'm putting down. If you're, you know, anybody in the world is a better artist than I am. I suck at art, like drawing. I'm not very good at. I'm better at painting. I have, I don't know why, but I can paint better than I can draw. And I can't do people. <laughs> Not a very good people artist. So anyway, that's that. I'll move that aside so it's out of the way. And we'll go back to this. Maybe my glue gun has some more glue in it. I can add to that little... There we go. Just I put my stamp pad upside damn down. And then I lost the top. <sighs> okay. Let me add more to this little globule here, if it'll let me. See what I mean about building dimension? Because you can make it higher or lower if you want to. And then let that dry. It won't take too long to dry, obviously. It's a glue gun. And glue guns don't take too long to dry, thankfully. So you can get your project done pretty quickly. It's sticky. Okay. So, while that part's drying, I will show you with the paint um, how to go over some of the areas that we put the other parts on. So let's say you grab some paint and you want to paint your canvas. You could put some gesso, obviously, over this first, and I probably would recommend putting gesso over it first, but just for in, um, example purposes, I'm not going to waste gesso on it because I'm probably just going to chuck this in the trash when I'm done with it because it's just to show you. So I'm just going to throw... A slop of paint on there. Maybe I'll throw a different color just for the heck of it. We good times. My whole point of this is not for the color and it's not for my painting techniques either. <laughs> it's just to show you <laughs> because man it's like sloppy city but I just wanted to show you. This is just to try to quickly show you without this video because it's already getting long and I apologize. So I'm making a complete mess just to hurry up and show you. 
Now with gesso on there, you're gonna get better coverage, just so you know. Like right now, it doesn't cover as good because the gesso is not on there. I didn't, like I said, wasn't gonna waste gesso. There's no point. You will get the drift from what I'm doing. Lala, sloppy, sloppy. Here's a glue string that decided to peek itself. You'll know the glue strings when you start painting. You just pull them off. Anywho, it doesn't matter whether I paint the whole thing or not. See how cool you got some texture going on? But what's cool is, now here's the thing. You cannot dry this with a heat gun. Just saying. You dry this with a heat gun, unless you do it like from really far away and you're just like, very quickly going over it because if you dry it with a heat gun you're likely going to melt the glue so i'm going to come back when this is dry so i can show you some techniques i might add a little paint here to finish it off so i'll be right back okay see what i'm doing here i'm taking some gold metallic paint and i'm going over it now the thing is again i should have gessoed it because you would have gotten a better see a, a better see a better a better look at what i was doing because gessoing it makes all the difference in the world when it comes to the hot glue. Because you want to gesso it so that you get coverage. Um, because it, it'll wipe off a lot easier and you won't get that. It won't have the tooth to really hold on to the paint because it's like a real slick surface, you know, hot glue. Um, so you want to gesso it. But if you just keep at it and put a couple, uh, if you don't have gesso, just put a couple co uh, coats of paint on it. Um, it'll eventually take... You know, because you can see it's kind of taking, it just needs, you know. But it's cool because you can kind of get this really cool, you know, abstract texture thingamabobbity going on. You know, and you can even like, for the tree, let me get some, uh, see if I can find quickly some of my brown paint. Is that it? That's a burnt umber. I'd rather have just brown if I could find it. I think this is brown. Yeah, brown iron oxide, whatever. That'll work. Just to show you. Like, before you would put the, um, the gold on the tree, so I can go back and do the gold. Like, in between where I didn't put hot glue, you can do, like, brown. And don't worry if it gets on the actual raised parts from the hot glue, because you go back over it with the gold. And that can kind of give it a cool... And I did go over it with the heat gun, but like I said, I held it way far away and just kind of kept it boom, kept it moving. Never, never let it get, never let the canvas or anything get really hot at, a, in any, at any point. I just kind of blew basically warm air on it and it was fine as long as you do that. So I'm basically going, because I didn't put a solid on this part here. I um, hope you could see this because that would suck if you can't. This, on like the main part of the branch here, I did not make it solid and hot glue. I don't know if you were able to tell that, but I did like lines kind of. So I was just going like in between where those lines are. Just to kind of give it a little interest on the trunk part. But you can do like a lot of things. There's like a ton of things you can do with this. You know, you can color the whole thing brown to make it obviously tree-like you can kind of go over it and make it and like be sloppy about it and make it just like the you can go around the outside of all the branches and then go back with the gold on just the raised parts of the branches if that makes sense But, I mean, it's just a lot of fun to play with, and it's a cheap way to add texture to your uh, canvases or art journals even, and, you know, whatever, and have fun doing it, you know? You can do some, you can put some uh, pattern on um, some chipboard like I did of something and then have the kids paint it you know like hey kids here's like a you know a canvas for you to paint and they can paint over the texture and have fun 
you know, doing this too. So it's not just an adult game that I'm playing here. It's not a game, but to me, painting is kind of a game. It's like, try to make this look not crappy. That's the object of this game. And I usually don't win at that game. <laughs> um, but yeah, see, it's kind of fun. I like to paint. I do like to paint. Uh, so yeah, and then you can add like branches that aren't. Um, and if I had a better brush that wasn't so thick on the end, I could actually make branches that aren't ridiculous. And then when that dries, you can go over it with the gold. So, you know, highlight and you, you can even use your finger to just go over it with the gold. You can use ink of gold. Or you can use just metallic paints. Whatever you want, my friends. Yeah, like for instance, with the, um, I'll use the Inca Gold Bronze. And I'll see, this might be a bit stiff, but I'm being messy here. I'm not concentrating enough to get it where it should be. <laughs> but, and that's still wet. Er Oh my god, I can't get it right. But see how well it, it does with the Inca Gold? It just picks right up. Picks up all the bronze really nicely. See? So, I mean, there's so much that can be done here. And if I can get that to dry without melting it. Let me see if I can a minute. There we go. It's a little bit drier. But I forgot about the little bottoms here. But I mean, this would be fun for, you know, for mixed media. You know, for your mixed media projects. You know, if you can't think of just the right thing to add, you know, you can always add some hot glue and play with it. And if it doesn't come out right, you know, most of the time you can peel it up. I mean, it's going to peel up anything that was underneath of it. You know, if you have paint or something underneath. Um or you know any kind of paper or anything it'll probably peel it up but you could put something back on top of it if you didn't like it like texture paste if you really didn't like it you know but and see now here's where i'm going to add just over the tree branches i mean the tree glue parts add some of the ink of gold to give it a cool effect Obviously, if you have a precision tip hot glue gun, you are going to have a way easier time with this. And it's going to come out a lot better than my fat-tipped 15-year-old hot glue gun, <laughs> which is just crap. But yeah, see how like now that tree is like metallic? It's just kind of fun. It's just a fun thing to do. So anyway, that's it. That's all I'm showing you. That's all you get. Tough. You're done. Get out of here leave. I'm just kidding. Um, I hope you picked up something from this. I don't know. Maybe you didn't. Who knows, man? I'm just trying here. I'm trying to make you happy and I don't know how. <laughs> oh, just kidding. <laughs> I hope you had fun watching me goof off because that's basically what I did. Burn myself a couple times and screw up and all that stuff, which is pretty typical. But, oh, you can also use paint on these, by the way. So you can dip this in some paint and, you know, because who cares? You can just peel it off and redo it. So who cares, man? I do like the way this background came out. I'm, I totally am digging the colors on that. And I might, I'm, it's inspiring me to do a background. Um, that's those colors because I love it. And I'm just going to add 
some of my, oh, that looks like raindrops. That's what that looks like. This stamp looks like raindrops. Isn't that cool? See, that stamp looks like raindrops. I'm not going to peel that one off for sure. I like that. Because then if you did like a bunch of them, it's like red rain, but it looks like raindrops. Of course, the tree's in the way now. But it looks like, see, you could do stuff like that. There's your raindrops for your journal page. Of course, you're not going to probably have red rain. But I am because I'm awesome. I have red rain. But isn't that cool? I think that's so awesome. Now I kind of like that page. Huh. I might actually peel this thing off, this wonky thing, and then re see what I mean? Like you could peel it off, but you're going to peel off a piece of your chipboard, which is fine because I can always just repaint that part and voila, it'll just give it some interest. I'll just take some paint and go over it and it'll be awesome. Anyway, do what you love, love what you do, have fun. Let me know if you've ever done this in the comments below. Have a great rest of your day. Love you guys. Bye.